Hey everyone, I'm Clive. This is Akush. Hi, it's Ruta. Hello, it's Sebastian. And today we're going to try to simplify the Kobe process. I remember back 25 years ago being at university and having a lot of what I thought were great ideas. And we had research projects that we could tie in with industry. This is a, an example that I'm thrilled to share, really proud to share that we have industry. We've got BIM consulting, the really real world implementation. We've got education and we've also got software creators on board and tying that together has actually created something pretty special I think and more to come from this as well. I'm going to start off with a bit of an introduction and very short kind of what is Planoly and you'll see how that fits into the rest of the workflow and then we'll look at how this all came about and Rita will share the why behind it and the three steps to understand how they can support you and what the results are in making it a lot quicker as an output. Let's get started. The background is that we make it one click to create a BIM execution plan and to manage your, your project standards. We make it simple to reuse requirements, information requirements, and create them so that you can assign them to teams. And then we also make it easy to check that people are meeting those. You set requirements, you want to make sure that people are delivering to them. What we have today is how those three steps incorporate now templates for Kobe requirements that can be packaged into a set of information requirements for your project for each milestone. And then we have a process for quality assurance that automates that model check against those requirements and tells you if things are incomplete or if there are missing requirements. And then we also have now an export integrated into this workflow that can enable you to automate this process a lot more than um, the manual work that potentially creating lots of spreadsheets is, is generally doing. So I'm going to hopefully switch to the right, right place. The first thing is inside of your plan module, you'll now have some nice templates that dig into a lot more of the Kobe requirements and understanding Kobe. So this would be a, a simple click to add that to a, a document and then start managing it. We'll talk more about this one um, as we go through the workflow, but that's the, the plan piece and having templates to understand and to describe how you're going to implement Kobe. Then if we look at the scope module, we have a set of information requirements that are coming from the library. Inside the library, you'll see not just the Kobe 2.4, but you'll also see the new version, Kobe version three coming in the future. So if you're looking for these properties and they're all specifically tagged so that you can use them directly in your project, it's super quick and easy to do that now. And if you do have that and you want to use that, it's an understanding of what your responsibilities are. And maybe if um, I drag in the architectural requirements, this would create us a set of those requirements in our project. Let me close the library. And then you can start to see what those requirements are based on um, the type of information required at certain points in time by certain teams. So you can really dig into this and understand it. And then at the end of that process, you'll start to see as the models are delivered, you're able to check against them and see how well people are meeting those requirements. And then at the end of that process, there will be the ability to export handover data. And if you create a handover, you can start to filter that and start exporting that data as you build your Kobe requirements. Really quick intro, really quick preview, but in essence, what we're able to do with this process is from templates, specify a much leaner delivery. So rather than just asking for Kobe as a deliverable, we can really hone in on the requirements that are necessary for each team, rather than just over specifying. We have a workflow that makes it continuously uh, available and not something that's laborious to create so it can continually be refined and, and quality checked along the way. And we also have obviously all of that data, every decision that's made, every action, every request, every quality check, every um, communication all connected in there as well. That's a brief introduction into what Planoly can do and the process for the planning of it, the checking of it, and also the exporting of it. I'm going to hand this over to Rita to take it away and share some more of the, the nuts and bolts and really into the story of how we got here. And, and Sebastian will share a lot more about 
the results on a quality assurance and a return on investment perspective as well. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Clive. Uh, it was actually part of a BMA Plus Masters where she was doing her dissertation. And once a year, we get to host one student from BMA Plus. Last year, it was Rita Stern. And it was a pleasure to have her board for almost one year. And while she was developing her dissertation, it, it actually, the, the topic was quite fast. It was about 7D and we focused then on Kobe and the practical implementation of that was creating a tool to explain to our partners, to the designers, to the owners, etc., everyone, how to work with Kobe and how to create a Kobe deliverable for an as-built. And so we decided to make it on Plannerly. And then we decided, well, why not making it a something that we could share with the community and something that every Planoly user could be using for their own projects. So I'm just going to share my screen now and pass it to Rita. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I just want to have the opportunity to say a big thank you to BMA Plus for this wonderful opportunity to develop the research in this topic and let us be more aware of it. And it was a full year of research. And I also thank Limson for, for having me and of course, Plannerly to, to host us in this webinar and give us this opportunity to, to share the knowledge. And thank you once again for grabbing my work as the reference for and the basis for, for all of it. I think it's really nice to have industry and professional practice together with students and to reduce this gap between academia and professionals. So let me tell you a little bit how it uh, started and why we focus the, on this spreadsheet format. Uh, we know that Kobe can be presented in different formats, but as we, we realized Kobe standing for inform, construction operation and buildings information exchange, uh, the spreadsheet looks like a really nice format because it will allow people to apply just some mathematical functions that we are familiar with. And also XML files are now used amongst almost everyone. You don't have to be attached to a specific BIM software. Uh, it's readable also for uh, facility management software. So it can be exported from altering software and imported again. So this bidirectional uh, property was also a plus on all of it. And again, we set our primary goals to help teams to be effective and efficient in their work. So it was really important to shorten these divergences between multiple stages of the building uh, since design until the, the handover, and also to make, to make it easier for teams to deliver proper COVID data. So Avoiding data re-entry and data waste was also a great plus for all of us while developing this Kobe planner. And as we said, this trigger uh, started because we observed uh, together with Limson, with our practical experience, there was such a lack of a structured framework in advanced stages of design. And also it was nice to have a deeper assessment in a concept that was already existent. So we really didn't want to start a new standard. So Kobe Planner is not bringing a new standard. It's only a practical implementation of a Kobe guideline. And that was the final goal to make it effective and user-friendly for teams to deliver the proper data. And now if we jump into Plannerly, how it was done and how it was development, I will just give you a quick overlook how it works inside. So we decided to be easier and to be in phases uh, to propose three levels connected to project stages, of course. So light, intermediate, and full. We think it's easier to have information delivered in uh, steps or milestones rather than then at the end, of course, uh, have it all. So this was our proposal. And here you can find which Kobe worksheets were included on each stage. So this is our proposal, and of course, then it could be customized and you, we, could, we could have anything with the opinion of the client or the owner or the feedback from the industry. But this, this was what we felt that would make sense to have in this, this first uh, stage. So as you see, we would start with only three worksheets, then we would have a few more, and then also a few more in, uh, again in the end in the full, the full stage. We see inside uh, Plannerly, 
we have these three main chapters, as uh, Clive was uh, showing us in the very beginning. And you can find some basic notions about COVID, what it is, what it should not be misunderstood. Uh, also, some very practical schemas, so visual information that it's more immediate, let's say, than the, all the text that we usually find in other documents. So this is really intended to be a practical guide for the teams to be able to easily understand the requirements, to be aware what information should be, and also which information should be delivered in each, each uh, stage. So we will also find these tables with uh, some examples. So we will have the COVID parameter, the description, so the, the formal uh, definition, let's say, of the parameter, and also some examples. So of course, each company has its naming conventions, but it's just for teams to have a practical view of what, what should be the data input in these parameters. And also here is the graphical overview of the three stages. You, we are now seeing the full, and you can see which worksheets should be integrated and also with the COVID colors. And I will now pass it to Sebastian to go through the real project implementation. So what Rita has just showed is the practical output of what was developed as a dissertation. And just to enforce it, this is a template that is now available for the community. So anyone can just take that template and as Clive said, add it to a, to a BEP or exchange information requirements or whatever. So I'm just going to show how it worked on our side and how we are implementing it on real world projects. So this looks exactly like the template Rita just showed. We have a BP here. We have one page called Kobe. I'm going to collapse it all, then expand it uh, as chapters and expand the entire sections. So what we decided when doing it on a real job is actually taking the sections that come from the templates and add the implementation that you would do inside, inside any software. So for an example here inside Revit, where exactly you would add the parameters that we are requiring as an as-built deliverable. So we are actually explaining how inside Revit that should be done, but this can all be customized to any particular software. So this is an improvement made for a project specific case. So how to fill in the Kobe requirements per zone, how to fill in uh, or to export the Kobe spreadsheet from Revit, uh, where I should add the information when it's component, where I should add the information when it's a type information, et cetera. This is on the plan part of Plannerly. Then we, uh, we are going to discuss the scope requirements. So we are actually going to the scope module and we, as Clive showed previously as well, we are going to the library, Kobe version two spreadsheet. I'm going to filter it. So we have here the filters that we were discussing, full, intermediate, and light. So full would be for an operation phase with the entire scope, or sorry, as uh, for the construction phase. And now I've just added all those requirements here into my project, and I'm going to filter by intermediate and select all the requirements for the intermediate. But here, of course, you can select exactly, and you should select exactly what you need per object. Because if you do what I'm doing here in this example, that will not be correct because I'm taking a lot of information that is not proper to this particular component. But so taking a mechanical equipment and I'm just, in, just assigning all those COVID requirements. If I expand it, you will see that the requirements are here on the construction phase. And so this is what the responsibility matrix uh, and the information needs would work with that. Going forward, if you want to verify the quality of the handover, you get some models and you can connect those models that you have on the verify module. You are going to connect those models with any particular uh, CDE. Uh, in this case, it's uh, Autodesk Docs. Uh, you get that model and that model is already rich in Kobe information. I'm going to the mechanical equipment and I'm going to create a rule to link th that equipment to the model that to the equipment that is inside the model. So in order to do that, I'm going to connect it with an assembly code, which is a uniformed code. And I'm going to type the value, which is D3050.90. And that will connect that card to the elements that are in the model with that assembly code or with that classification code. 
And then as you see, it's going to check if the COBE requirements are filled or not as red if they are not and as green if the COBE requirements are properly filled as information. So after doing that, I'm just going to select one of the items and go to the properties tab. And as you can see, I have I have already much information uh, here. So I have the COBE component installation dates, I have the warranty, etc. Going forward, uh, and this is a completely new feature, um, that's the handover export. So that new fixture is actually quite cool. We were very, very impressed to see it uh, when we first discussed it with Clive and Akos. So if I'm going to the export here, I have the export handover tab. I'm going to select a phase to export on my requirements. So group one construction and create and create a document. When I open that document, that's actually a Kobe spreadsheet exported from the model that is inside Plannerly or that is connected with Plannerly. The contact list here is coming from the contacts in Plannerly, which can be very useful as well. I have the types that I already had inside the model. As you can see, you have the classification codes. And also on the components, I already have an installation date. I already have a component name, component serial number, et cetera, all component space that is filled directly in that spreadsheet. So actually, as we were saying, it's coming from the requirements, then the verification, then the export of the requirements, just to rephrase uh, what Clive said in the beginning. As a conclusion on our side, what this brought to our jobs or what is brought to our current workflow, it's much easier to discuss Kobe requirements with some clients that sometimes don't know exactly what they need for the operation phase. So it's a standardized way to put it. And it's also a very efficient tool to communicate with owners, with the designers, assisting the teams implementing Kobe inside the models, testing the quality of the handover file. As a conclusion on a first project, we spared at least 60 hours in pointless discussions on who should fill each requirement, which requirement should be here, what we would need for that building, what type of requirements, etc. So that's a very simple and visual tool that helps us a lot on discussing the, the requirements.